when you think about skin cancer, you often think of summer and sunny days, but we need to think about it year round. That's right. So joining us today is Dr. Jennifer David with Cone Health Dermatology. She's here to talk about skin cancer in the winter and the importance of screenings for everyone, regardless of your skin tone. All right, Dr. David, let's first just start off with how does winter sun exposure contribute to skin cancer differently than maybe summer exposure does? Hi, well, thank you for having me. And what I, the point I like to make is that regardless of season, the sun emits something called UV radiation, and that will accumulate over our lifetime. So if you have a tan in the summer or just daily exposure in the winter, over time, the UV radiation from the sun will damage your skin cells, and that can lead to different types of skin cancers. All right, so on cloudy winter days, the sun rays still impact our skin, but maybe we're not standing outside for all that long. Correct, so there is something that I like to remind my patients of an effect called incidental sun exposure. So that's the sun exposure we get when we're driving in our cars. Um, our windshields don't fully filter out out UV radiation. So if you're driving to work on a sunny day, even if it's cold outside, the UV radiation will be coming through your windshield and exposed areas such as your face, your neck, your chest, your hands for that matter, will get accumulated sun exposure every day. So if you have a commute that's 45 minutes each way, you're talking about an hour and a half of sun exposure every day. And if you're doing fun activities outside like skiing or hiking, if you're skiing, you're not only exposed to the sun directly, but also through the reflection from the snow. So it's important to remember that just because it's winter, that doesn't mean that we skimp out on our uh, daily sun protection with uh, sunscreen. Okay, so sunscreen all around. Can you elaborate on how to choose maybe the right sunscreen for winter, considering facts like SPF and skin type and things like that? Yeah, so the one important point I want to make is that all skin types need sunscreen, regardless of skin tone. So you can be fair skinned, medium brown skin, or very dark brown skin. We all need sunscreen. If you have pigment in your skin, you do get some natural protection from the melanin, but it's not 100%. So we have to wear sunscreen with our moisturizer every day. So you want to look for specific ingredients in the winter time to make sure that it's going to hydrate your, your skin. Or also a little trick that I have to remind patients is to make sure that your skin is hydrated before you put on your sunscreen. So things that I look for are ingredients such as hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is a natural moisturizing factor that holds on to moisture. So I have a sunscreen here, my go-to for the winter months. It's by Is Tree. You order on Amazon or directly from their website. And this has something in it called hyaluronic acid. And this is a very hydrating gel. So as you can see here, you put it on and it just blends in like a very light lotion. We don't have to worry about it leaving like a dark cast or anything like that. But at the end of the day, it really comes down to one, wearing something that feels comfortable on your skin, and two, making sure that it has an SPF of 30 or higher. Um, also, any sunscreen is better than no sunscreen, but the 30 is the number that you really wanna look for. Okay, so 30 and above is what we need to look at. Okay, that's what we need Correct. to have in our, in our cabinets, and that's what we need to have when we go some players. All right, so for those who love the outdoor winter activities, winter sports, what steps in addition to wearing the sunscreen should they be taking? Yeah. You want to make sure that you're protecting your eyes. There is something called ocular melanoma, so making sure that you're wearing um, sunshades or if you're skiing, making sure you're wearing goggles that have UV protect in it. You want to make sure you don't forget areas like your lips, make sure your lip balm has sunscreen in it, and just keeping your uh, any areas that's exposed to the sun covered with um, you know, your gloves, your scarves, and things like that. Okay, um, what are some of the signs of skin cancer that people should be aware of? That's a great question. So first and foremost, we look, we have patients look for anything new or changing. There are three types of skin cancers. The scariest one that most people become alarmed by is something called melanoma, which traditionally presents as a dark brown or black mole. So it could be a new mole that popped up out of nowhere or an existing mole that went from light brown to dark brown, um, or it went from light brown to dark brown and it's growing or becoming itchy. Those are all things you wanna look for and come see your dermatologist right away. 
But there's also something called non-melanoma skin cancers. Those are your basal cells and your squamous cells. They're actually the more common ones that come from years of accumulated sun exposure. With those, you wanna look for like a pimple that's not healing on like your nose or your ear, an area that gets a lot of sun, or a dry patch that is scaly and sometimes bleeding. That could be a precancer that could lead into something called a squamous cell carcinoma. So you want to look for newer changing moles something that you thought was a pimple that after about six weeks is not healing or like a dry scaly patch that becomes uh, symptomatic and is bleeding. Those are the three big things I tell patients to look for. The question now is for those with darker skin tones, are the signs different? So patients with darker skin tones need to pay close attention to special areas such as our palms, our nail beds, and also the bottoms of our feet. So there's something called acromelanoma when a melanoma happens in those areas. A notable figure um, that I often educate patients on is Bob Marley. He passed away melanoma on his great toe. So I, patients of color, unfortunately, tend to have a higher predisposition to melanoma in those sites, and they often tend to be more deadly. So pay attention to dark lines in your nail bed or new or changing moles on your palms or the bottoms of your feet. Okay, and for everyone, um, where is skin cancer more likely to develop that we should pay special attention to for possible signs? I'm always thinking about like your nose or your ears or something like that. Yes, you are correct. So areas that get that are exposed to the sun more frequently are the areas you want to pay close attention to. I always remind patients our skin has memory. So all of the burns and exposure we've had in our teens and 20s will follow us through our lifetime. So a lot of skin cancers are delayed. It doesn't happen right away. So I have a lot of patients who come in and they're in their 50s or 60s and they're very diligent with their sun protection and sun avoidance. But when they were youthful, maybe not so much. But that's when they're starting to see these skin cancers pop up on their nose and their ears. Um, even if you're wearing a hat and sunscreen on your face, wearing a hat to protect your head and your face, our ears still stick out. So you have to make sure that you protect those areas when you're applying your sunscreen uh -huh. and make sure we're diligent when doing our at home exams, looking at our skin on those areas as well. I know, and I know you told us the three things to look for, but then when is a skin cancer screening by a dermatologist recommended? And then what does it include? So I recommend all young adults, like 18 or older, have at least their baseline skin check. And if you have a strong family history of a first degree relative, that is a parent or a sibling who's had skin cancer, specifically melanoma, you may want to come earlier. So I've had some 12 year olds come in for skin cancer screenings because they have such a strong family history. But on average, you want to come um, in like your early 20s and get your baseline and develop a relationship with your dermatologist so they know what your moles and your skin look like. So um, anyone should get a screening and depending on how much sun damage you have and what your predisposing factors are, such as your family history and how much sun damage you've had, depends if you have to come every year. If uh -huh. someone's had a skin cancer, sometimes we follow them more closely like every six months. Or if you're very diligent and you had your baseline, sometimes we can stretch it out to every two years. Okay, uh, we've got about a minute left. If someone is interested in scheduling a skin cancer screening, can they call a dermatology office directly or do they need to go through their primary caregiver? Uh, great question. So that's very much dependent on someone's insurance. So if you certain insurance plans allow you to call the office directly, but others require you to have a referral from your primary care uh, doctor. So we will see all patients or if you have no insurance, you could come in and self pay, but make sure you know if your insurance requires you to have a referral and you can just get that very easily from your primary care physician. Okay, great. Thank you so much for your time and your expertise. We appreciate that so much.